Number one, so let's say we're getting into private lending or we're, we're investing into something where we have money and we want to invest it somewhere. Here's a question. Is the investment in a piece of real estate or is the investment into a company? Okay, there's a big difference. Is the investment into real estate, a piece of property, or is the investment into a company? Now, here's the thing. We can invest into a company many different ways. Okay, so we can have a company that uh, sells hamburgers. Okay, let's say our company is McDonald's. When we are an investor and we're investing in McDonald's, let's say we buy some McDonald's stock. What are we buying? Are we buying hamburgers? No. Are we buying the buildings that McDonald's owns? Not really. We're buying into that company and we're buying into how well that company performs, whether they meet their expectations or not. That's what determines whether the stock goes up or whether the stock goes down. Well, the same thing happens if we're investing into a company that is buying real estate. Is that company's going to meet their expectations? Are they going to realize their expectations? Are they going to be able to pay out based on what their expectations were? We have to look at it the same way, except sometimes some of these companies that we might invest in are fairly small. Maybe only have a few investments, maybe just getting started, maybe been around a long time. Do we do our research properly on these companies? Now, what's the difference between investing in a company that is going to buy real estate and actually buying a piece of real estate? Well, if we buy a piece of real estate, guys, we still have a solid asset. Even if the value goes up, the value goes down, our rent goes up, our rent goes down. Very, very rarely are we going to lose 100% of our investment, right? Even if, even if that property burns down to the ground, assuming we have insurance, we're still covered, okay? So it's very difficult to lose 100% of your investment if you're buying property. Now, what's the difference? We now go to the other side and we're investing into a company that is buying property or says they're buying property. Are they really buying property? How confident are we in them buying that property? How confident are we that they're gonna meet their expectations? What is their strategy for meeting those expectations? These are some of the things that we need to know and understand before we invest in that company. Does that make sense? You see the difference between investing into a company that is maybe investing in real estate, and that's what a lot of our private lending is doing these days, okay? Our promissory notes, our uh, lending agreements, um, maybe our GSAs that we're getting involved in, all of these sorts of things, our limited partnerships, whatever it might be, we're investing into a company that is supposed to meet expectations. The other side is investing in real estate. So when we're investing our money, we want to maybe do a mix of both. We want to think about where we're putting all of our money. Because what can happen is a company can disappear. A company can disappear with the money. A company cannot meet expectations. And our investment can go to zero. Now, the reason that these companies raise money, and it's normal, this is, it's, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, guys, okay? The reason people raise money is to be able to meet those expectations that they're planning on doing. And sometimes they need to get private lending to be able to do that. But what kind of research are we doing in the people that we invest in? That's what it comes down to, guys. What kind of research are we doing? How confident are we that they're going to meet their expectations? There's a big difference whether we invest in something that can disappear 100%. You know, if I invest, let's say, in Bitcoin right now, can it go down in value very quickly? Yes. Can it go up in value very quickly? Yes. Am I going to put every penny I have right now into something like that, that type of investment? Probably not a smart thing to do. Could it pay off? Absolutely. Could I potentially lose everything? Absolutely. So this is where we have to determine the risk that we're willing to take. We have to be a responsible investor in determining, okay, if somebody is promising me 20 or 25 or 30% returns, is that realistic? Are they going to be able to do it? And if they're promising returns that are significantly high, why is that? Does that mean that the risk is high? Usually it does, guys. The higher the percentage you're going to make, the higher chance you have to make money on your money, the higher risk you're going to have that goes along with that as well. So when you're making your investment decisions, what do you think is smarter? Putting it somewhere solid in a company that has a solid track record that has maybe been around a long time and the returns are promised are less or the opposite. Somebody who's maybe not been through a downturn yet always realized good numbers because of the market they've been in and it's always gone up. They've never seen it gone down yet. 
but they're promising fantastic numbers because that's what they've always gotten. They haven't been around long enough to see things go sideways. Where would you put your money? This is a tough decision because sometimes high numbers attract us, right? It's normal. The higher investment opportunity that we get, the higher returns that we're going to possibly see, we easily get attracted to that. We think, well, hopefully it'll just work out this one time. But are we putting in maybe our last life savings into it? Or is this money that we can play with? That's the decision that we need to make. The higher the risk, the less we should be putting in of money that really matters to us. So the first point we wanted to talk about tonight is where is your money invested? Is it invested in solid piece of real estate that you are on title for, that you actually own a piece of, that can't disappear, that you can leverage? Leverage meaning you're putting a small amount down and a bank is putting the vast majority of it down. Your money then becomes leveraged. You have somebody paying down that financing, a tenant, and you're cash flowing on a monthly basis because you bought the right property. Very much more difficult to go sideways in that scenario than if you're investing with a company that is promising dramatic returns. I've heard from a few investors, and this is one of the reasons that I wanted to bring this up today, guys, is I've heard from a few investors recently that have heard about some of the news stories of people being bitten, let's say, when it comes to their investments, maybe losing significant amounts of money. And they've said, you know, I want, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to get into joint venturing. I don't want to be a real estate investor anymore. I don't think I can handle this. And what I wanted to clarify with this first point here, guys, is there's a difference between, sorry, between being a real estate investor and investing in real estate and investing in a company that also invests in real estate. Okay. There is a difference. Um, and if we are going to invest in a company that invests in real estate and we're going to be a private lender and we are going to make an interest rate on our money, that's all fine. But this is going to lead us into point number two and three that we need to consider when it comes to investing and putting that money with that company. Remember, any company can disappear. Any company can go out of bank, go into bankruptcy. Any company can be dissolved and that money can disappear. So point number two. If we are then going to invest in a private lending scenario where it's an investor or it's a company that we're investing in, here's a question I want you to ask. How long have they been in business? Now, here's the key, and this is a very important question. Somebody might have been a real estate investor for the last five years and been very successful. They've invested in a market that has always gone up in value. They have then become an expert. How many of those have we seen recently? How long has that company been in business? How long has that investor been investing in real estate? Here's the question. Have they gone through ups and downs in their market? Another comment I've heard quite a bit recently from several investors is that a lot of the people that are having trouble, they have never seen a down market yet. They've always been investing as things go up. They've always been investing when interest rates were low. Guys, back in 2004, when we got started, our first mortgage was 6.7%, and that was an absolute steal. That was cheap, cheap, cheap. Of course, we know where interest rates went from there virtually down to nothing. I think the lowest we had was 0.5%, like under 1% on some of our mortgages at some point. That's how cheap money got. But now that we're back up to, I don't know what prime is, 7 point something now, 7.2, something like that. This is putting a lot of investors into really hot water. Why? Because number one, they didn't plan on it. Number two, their markets aren't appreciating like they might have planned on them appreciating. And especially if somebody is doing active real estate investing, in other words, maybe uh, buying a property, renovating it, expecting a certain refinance number because markets are increasing as well, or trying to sell it, maybe flip it, expecting a sale number because markets are always, you know, selling super hot, super fast. The, you know, the, the carrying costs for those secondary mortgages are going to be lower because they can sell it so fast. Well, what happens now when they can't sell it? What happens now when they have to hold that property now for four or five, six years, maybe? Can they still continue to pay that secondary financing? What's going to be their plan B? What's going to be their plan C? What's going to be their plan D? If you're putting tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars into an investment, guys, be very clear on what the strategy of that company is going to be. Be very clear and have they seen things go sideways before? 
What lessons have they learned when they've seen things go sideways before? Because those lessons are imperative to whether or not that company is going to last long enough for you to see your returns. Does that make sense? So we do want to diversify. We don't want to put all of our eggs into one basket, do we? The purpose of this is, is not to scare people away from investing. What this is, is actually to get you investing, to get you taking action, to, but to make sure that when you are doing that or where you are doing that is in the correct manner. Do you see what I'm saying? So do we, am I saying don't invest in a company? No, absolutely not. I'm saying invest in a company. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, it's less secure. Um, make sure we have some property investments as well, but invest in a company. There's nothing wrong with that. We can get some good returns. It's a good way to maybe maximize our RSPs, or it's maybe a good way to use some of the cash that we have and, you know, maybe some short-term lens. It, it's a good way to do it. There's nothing wrong with that, but we need to do our research on who we're doing it with. What kind of experience do they have? Have they done this before? Have they bought this type of property before? Have they done this type of renovation before? All of these sorts of things. And what happens if the market doesn't increase? What happens if interest rates stay high? What happens if these are the questions we need to ask guys so that we have a plan B if things don't go right to plan. We have a plan C. We don't lose all of our money. Okay.